This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings so she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Tuesday, March 22, and time for the Barbados Today evening update. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. It's been rumored over the past couple of weeks that government is planning to pardon 50 prisoners this year as part of the Golden Jubilee celebrations. And today, one government senator actually spoke out publicly on the issue. Speaking in the upper house during debate on the estimates, Reverend David Durant said he would fully support such a move. An act of goodwill. You know, during our 50th year Jubilee celebration, I think would be to, if the government can think about just pardoning and releasing 50 prisoners, you know, in, in, in this Jubilee um, year. There are those who are really good behavior. There are those who are working very, very good. And those officers will know those who can be granted such. You know, I, 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 I believe it would be a good gesture in a jubilee year, you know, to offer pardon and a release to 50 well-behaved um, inmates. You know, it will bring such joy, you know, to individuals and to families. And I think it would be a very good initiative. This is our jubilee, this is our 50th jubilee. This is the only time we'll be at this point. We will never be here again. And we apologize for the quality of the audio on that extract. Barbadians working at the country's embassy in Brussels are safe. A word of this from Foreign Affairs Minister Maxine McLean following the twin blast that left at least 31 people dead and over 200 more injured. Speaking on the sidelines of a Caribbean-China consultation at the Hilton Resort this morning, Senator McLean said she had spoken to the staff and everyone is accounted for and safe. Workers at the Barbados Water Authority will remain off the job despite a meeting with the Labour Minister today. Dr. Esther Basuku met with the top brass of the Barbados Workers' Union at Parliament this morning and the B and BWA officials this afternoon for talks on the dispute, which has resulted in five days of protest. Following the hour-and-a-half-long meeting, union boss Tony Moore told the media the BWU was now waiting on a date from the minister on when she will hold a joint meeting with the disputing parties. What we have done therefore for the last few minutes in that meeting was to clearly articulate this union's position, reiterating that while the subject of discussion over a 10-year period has been about increments, the action taken by the Executive Council of the Barbados Workers' Union relates less to increments and more to the issue of disrespect by the Barbados Water Authority is continued insistence on dishonoring agreements which it has made over time. There is no basis to stop the action up to now. The Minister has merely spoken to the Barbados Workers' Union, so the action continues at the court, at the Water Authority. Independent Senator Sir Henry Fraser is concerned that provisions were not made in the 2016-2017 estimates of revenue and expenditure for the heritage sector. In fact, he told the upper house he had looked in vain in the estimates for evidence that authorities wished to protect the country's heritage in the coming year with no success. And he's warning that if special attention is not paid to that sector, it can and severely impact the country's tourism product. Madam President, we must take a leaf out of the books of Mexico, of Egypt with its pyramids, of Curacao, our, neighbor, our nearest neighbor with a rich, heavily exploited, profitable heritage, Curacao, of Cuba and of Britain. And I mention Cuba because people are simply lining up by the hundreds of thousands and the millions to go to Cuba. 
People have been waiting for Cuba's heritage to open up. And they are not going to Cuba for the beaches. They are going to Cuba for the heritage. And we must wake up very rapidly to the fact that Cuba has the capacity when the North Americans and the British are going there in droves to wipe out our tourism if we do not protect our heritage. Madam President, this is a matter of urgency. And I wish to repeat that. Dealing with our heritage, protecting our heritage is a matter of urgency. I'm not jealous of Cuba. I'm simply stating a fact that most people in the trade recognize that Cuba's opening up to the world has the capacity to destroy our tourism unless we protect and preserve our heritage. In sports, Barbados will be fielding three overseas-based footballers when they take on Curacao in round one of the Caribbean Football Union's Champion Cup at the Usain Bolt Sports Complex tomorrow night. The side will be led by Emerson Boyce, former captain of the Wigan Athletic Club that played previously in the English Premier League and won the 2013 FA Cup prior to its demotion. There's regional and international news after this short break. To news from the region, authorities in Guyana are probing yet another fire at the Camp Street prison. However, unlike the recent fire that left 17 prisoners dead, authorities believe yesterday's fire was a deliberate act. More in this report from Capital News. Riot police and the Guyana Fire Service were called into the Camp Street jail to put out another fire reportedly set by inmates this afternoon. The motive for this latest action is still unknown, but an investigation is currently underway. All of this is taking place in the middle of the Commission of Inquiry into the recent prison unrest that left 17 dead. Lawyer at the Commission, Selwyn Peters, rushed down to the prison to get a first-hand view of what was taking place. After a brief visit, he came out and told the media that the fire was deliberate. Um, it wasn't an electrical fire. It was a fire deliberately lit by someone who threatened to burn the prison down. That's been investigated right now by the... Um, Criminal Investigations Unit and charges will be laid as appropriate. And on the international scene, Belgium police issues a wanted notice for a male suspect following the bomb attacks that left more than 30 people dead. He is suspected of being involved in the explosions which tore through the country's main airport and a metro station. He was seen on CCTV pushing a trolley through the airport with two other suspects. Both of those men are believed to have died in the blast, possibly by detonating suicide devices. The so-called Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. Brussels has turned into a city of sirens and a centre of fear. These police cars are rushing to the metro station uh, where the explosion went off earlier. Unconfirmed reports of casualties there, including deaths, are mounting. None of them... Questions for Belgium security apparatus, supposedly on high alert after perpetrators of last year's Paris attacks were found in Brussels. So-called Islamic State says it masterminded the attacks in both countries. The bomber's presumed message today, no one is safe, not here, not anywhere in Europe. In this moment, noir for our country, plus than ever... In this black moment for our country, now more than ever, I call on everyone to show calm and solidarity. We are facing a difficult challenge. We have to face it together. This attack has struck Belgium, but it was Europe that was targeted, and the whole world is concerned. We have to realize the gravity of this terrorist attack. Belgians are in no doubt as to the gravity of the situation today. 
Similar to Paris after the attacks there, people here in Brussels are determined not to give in to terror, they say, but many are scared. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website www.pabilistudy.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good evening.